my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I'm going to be talking about the many books that I ended up reading in January of 2022. So yes, I'm going to be talking about the many books that I read in January. I believe I read 18 and DNF'd one of them. Also, this is a new filming location for me. I haven't filmed a video in about a month and the reason as to why is all in my video i posted on my chronic illness channel and so you can go check that out if you want to know a life update because i don't feel like getting into it now because i don't want to cry like i did in that video because i cried incessantly i kind of had a mental breakdown while filming it <laughs> but that's not what we're gonna do today we're not gonna do that anyway um essentially i'm living in my parents house for the next many months um and i don't have a set filming location we're just gonna set you up in front of a window with some sunlight and there we go <laughs> um so yeah you can go check out that video if you want to know what's been going on with me and why i haven't filmed in over a month because all the videos you have been seeing recently have all been um pre-filmed pre-uploaded pre-edited all that jazz enough me rambling you don't want to hear about me rambling you want to hear about the books that i read so let's get into it the first book that i read in 2022 was entered in the alien bride lottery by margot bond collins um this book is very interesting this was recommended to me by kayla from on the fritz she's one of my channel members and a few months ago she recommended me this book and i haven't read it yet before this point and but i'm very interested obviously because i love alien romances so so this is the romance between natalie and cav and cav is a part of this alien species that has kind of like saved earth from evil aliens and for earth to like give their thanks back they want human women to be drawn every year to become brides to these alien men and so it's kind of like the hunger games like your name gets chosen and you go on national television to find a alien husband. Um, and so that's essentially what Natalie and Cav are going through. Natalie does not want to be there. She's going to try and be the worst bride ever because she wants to be sent home. Um, <laughs> so there's no killing. It's not like the Hunger Games with killing in it. But it's on like television and all that stuff. Cav, the first woman that he sees Natalie, knows that she is his true mate. So... He's trying to convince her to stay and to be with him. If you love the Hunger Games in the selection, I think you'd really love this one. Maybe if you're not, haven't read a lot of alien romance, you might like this one because it has those little tidbits of other dystopian novels you may like. I thought the concept was really interesting and it really sucked me in. However, the world building was not all that I wanted, but I kept asking while I was reading, what does that mean? Where did that come from? What's the history behind this? And that wasn't really explained. Maybe it would be if I read more of the series, but I don't really think so. Overall, I found this to be really enjoyable. It's just not my favorite alien romance. I gave it a four out of five stars and the tropes in here are obviously alien romance. It deals with faded mates. It's on Kindle Unlimited and there's a possessive hero and the hero definitely falls first in this one. Okay, so the next three books I'm not gonna mention or talk about because they're all in a dedicated reading vlog for y'all to watch. I read three books by the author duo Tiffany Roberts because I was on their live show with Jen and Jessen. I will link that live show down below as well as the video where I talk about these three books. But essentially I just wanted to read three short Tiffany Roberts books because I love Tiffany Roberts. They write some fantasy romance, paranormal romance, and romance. Basically romance books that aren't contemporary only. <laughs> so the three books that I read in there were Icebound, which is a very short novella. I also read His Darkest Craving, which is a paranormal shadow demon romance, which is hotter than you would expect. Like you wouldn't expect like a shadow demon to be hot. This was. <laughs> and then I also read Undying, which is a alien romance yeah it's an alien romance because this woman crash lands on this planet um and she falls for the first person she, and the only person she sees on this planet if you want to know my ratings and thoughts for these go check out that video i don't have a review for undying on my goodreads or even in that video as you can see by the end of the video because um when i finished this book it was when i was not good with my health and my memory was shot so um if you want to know more about this book, maybe go read other people's reviews on Goodreads. <laughs> so I decided to binge read the rest of the Hathaway series by Lisa Kleypas because I loved Mine Till Midnight. Um, and so I just wanted to read all of them. And I loved this family so much. So I read book two, which is Seduce Me at Sunrise. And this one is about Mary Penn and Wynn or Kev and Wynn. I don't want to go too deep into these books because they are in a series. And I personally think you should read them in order because you get the best reading experience out of it. Um, but this is essentially a childhood friend's uh, childhood crush 
and they grow into lovers. So Kev was essentially adopt adopted into the Hathaway family um, because the Hathaway's father ended up finding him beaten and bloody. Um, he's a Romani. And um, essentially back then, Romani were very much ostracized from society. So they take him in. And ever since he met Wynn, one of the daughters in the family, he has been utterly in love with her, but it's like broody about it. He won't ever tell her because he thinks that he's not good enough for her. Um, and then Wynn also has a huge crush on him and years go by and they have this mutual pining for each other. And then um, Wynn gets really, really, really sick. Her and a few other family members got the scarlet fever. Ever since then, Wynn's health has not been the same. Um, and so the beginning of this book is her going to, I believe, France to go see a special doctor to help her regain her strength and she goes there for a couple of years and before she leaves though she basically asks like Kev like I need you to reveal your feelings for me because I love you essentially and he won't do it both of them are heartbroken they're not the same and then this book jumps to when uh when comes back a few years later and Kev may not have the strength to stay away from her um I loved this one <laughs> took Kev a little bit too long to get a grip on his emotions. Like I just want a man to own up to how he feels and to go for the girl. I'm not the biggest fan of uh, not being with you to save you from myself, broody kind of thing. Um, so that, that wasn't my favorite part of it, but I did love it. And I think this is totally a five star book. So I gave it five stars. I personally love when she's one of my favorite heroines by Lisa Kleypas because of how strong and admirable she is. I also have a weak health <laughs> and I just love how she took the time and dedication to regain her strength and to be the woman she was always meant to be. And I love how she took no crap from Kev. She was like, I want you. Why won't you admit your freaking feelings already? <laughs> there's a trigger warning in here for racism and uh, there's a drugging too. Uh, the tropes in here, there's a caretaking scene like many Lisa Kleypas books. Um, it's childhood crush, damaged hero, different social class. It's a historical romance. There is longing between the two characters and it is a part of a series following siblings. The next book that I read was a novella and a mafia book. I haven't read a mafia book in quite a while. This one's called Abroad for Vow by Shauna Bell. So this is the prequel romance to the main book about Christoph and Katya, which is not out yet. I'm hopefully gonna be getting an arc of it very soon because I told Shauna Bell how much I loved this prequel and I thought it was so cool. So their full length story doesn't come out until later this year. So this is like the prequel of how they meet. And I find it to be very interesting. <laughs> So Kristoff is this mafia boss. He's very bad, dangerous. And um, he essentially knew Katya's mother because her mother was friends with his mother. But there's a big age difference between Katya and Kristoff. So the heroine's mother in here, Katya's mom, she leaves the heroine on Kristoff's doorstep. Kristoff is this big head honcho mafia Russian boss man. And um, she, Katya's mom knows that Kristoff will keep her daughter safe. I think her daughter's about to turn 17 or 18 in this book. And there is like a 17 age or older uh, age gap between the two of them. And nothing really happens romantically between the two of them. This is just the prequel of how the two of them meet and like their dynamic and everything. Essentially read about in the book how he gets guardianship over her. The next book that comes out soon will be their full length book. And it's about him being her guardian and being a mafia boss man. I thought this was super interesting. I'm very intrigued about their story. It has like the dark mafia elements that I'm very prepared for. Um, trigger warning in here, there's animal death, sexual assault, and murder. And then tropes, it's age gap, alpha hero, a damaged hero, dark romance, mafia romance, and Katya has never been kissed and she gets her first kiss in this book. Um, and it is a novella. I gave this book a four to five stars and I'm very much looking forward to the full length book. I also have been doing some Ice Planet Barbarian rereads. <laughs> um, I've been struggling very much to fall asleep at night. And so I thought that rereading these books would give me some comfort while I try and fall asleep. So I've been listening to them while I fall asleep. And so I read a few of them this month. Um, so I decided to reread Barbarian Lover which is book three, which was the next book I was on. This is an alien romance series, by the way, if you don't know. <laughs> if you don't know about the Ice Planet Barbarian series, go look it up, please. <laughs> this is book three about um, Ahako and um, Kira. 
And um, yeah, I gave this one four stars. I think I'm li liking these books the more that I reread them. So I think this one bumped up a star for me. I think I was like 3.5 or a three and I bumped it up to a four. Then I decided to finish the McCabe trilogy by Maya Banks. I read Never Love a Highlander. So this is the romance between Kaylin and Riona. Kaylin, I believe is, is it the youngest brother? I don't know, one of the brothers in the McCabe uh, clan. This is a Highlander romance, by the way. And Riona McDonald is the daughter to the laird of a neighboring clan who they're trying to be in, in an alliance with for a while. Um, and Riona was supposed to marry the brother from book one, and then he found his love of his life, and so then she's supposed to marry the guy from book two, but then he found the love of his life, and so then she's essentially just left with the third brother. <laughs> Uh, which is Caitlyn. They could put an arranged marriage so that their clans could be in an alliance. Riona is this warrior woman who just wants to wear breeches all day and spar with the men. And Caitlyn has some very stereotypical views on women and does not think that she should be doing that at all. This is for sure an enemies to lovers romance so they do not get along whatsoever at the beginning. Anyway, this is just the journey of starting to get to know, to get to know one another and Rihanna showing Kaylin how she's more than just a woman to run a keep and to be pregnant. I really like this one. It's not my favorite in the series, however, and I just preferred the other two couples in the series to this one, but that's just my opinion. Trigger warnings in here is there is a severe on-page beating which broke my heart and there is a mention and talk of sexual assault. Um, tropes in here, you have arranged marriage, damaged hero, highlighter romance, it's a historical romance, it's a romance centered around a married couple, it's a part of a sibling series, and the centers around a warrior woman, and there's a wedding in here too. I give this book a four and five stars. Next, I read another favorite. I read Sweet Talk by Cara Stone. I listened to this through Audible Plus and this was so much fun. I read the first book in this series, the Love Line series, which was Call Me Maybe uh, at the end of last year. And it was all my favorites of the year. <laughs> I love that one so much. So this is the second book and I recommend reading book one just because it's, it's more fun that way if you read book one and then you read book two. I don't have a review posted on Goodreads because this is one of the books that I read when I was having one of my uh, episodes this month and my memory was not good. Um, so I don't have a review for you, but I do remember it being just really sweet and adorable. Um, this is very much supposed to be listened to, not read. Um, <laughs> like you get the best experience if you listen to it. Like it has all the special effects sounds too. Essentially this guy texts the wrong number and it's our heroine. And she knows who he is, but he doesn't know who she is. And so this whole book, he's trying to find out who this woman is and how she knows him. And she won't let him know. And she's trying to keep it a secret. And um, I just thought this was great. This has a seminal hero. This has great banter. There's a hidden identity in here. Opposites attract uh, a sweet hero too. Uh, this was just so cute. Um, and I love the romances where like they call or text the wrong person and they fall in love with them. I think that's so cute. I need to read more of those. So leave me any recommendations you have down below, please. But yeah, please listen to these books on Audible because they are a freaking treat. I, of course, give this book five out of five stars. Then I read another five star read. I read The Mistletoe Motive by Chloe Leese. I know we're already past Christmas, but um, I never think it's too late to read a Chloe Lee's book, even when it's centered around Christmas time. <laughs> I again do not have a review on Goodreads for this one because it's one of the books that I read during my episode. Um, but I do know that this is an enemy to lovers romance where our two characters, they work at this bookstore and they do not get along whatsoever. She is the cheery sunshine and he is the grump. So it's grumpy sunshine. The two of them start to get to know one another once they realize that the bookstore is kind of like might be in trouble of shutting down. And so they try to get all these methods put together and try to collaborate to try and save the bookstore. Um, and they may have like a competition with each other to see who can sell the most books. It's super fun. I love this one. There is um, autism representation. Our heroine has autism. And there is also diabetes rep. Our hero has, I don't remember which type it is, but he does have diabetes, which I of course love love the diverse representation that Chloe Lee's brings to all of her books. It is amazing. This does center around Christmas time, but it's a book that I feel like you could read at any time because the enemies to lovers, angst and tension between the two was just immaculate, beautiful. It should be read at any season. <laughs> um, the tropes in here, you have book lovers who both love to read books. There's a brooding hero, it's a Christmas book, chronic illness rep. There's great banter, it's grumpy sunshine, hate to love, opposites attract, 
um, Romance with a Disability Rep, and it is definitely a winter read. I love this one, and I need more people to read it. I know I need more people to read Chloe B's books in general, okay? I need also to get this book in my physical hands. Like, I need a physical copy of this book to add to my Chloe B's collection. <laughs> then I read the next book in the Hathaway series, which was Tempt Me at Twilight. This is the romance between Poppy and Harry Rutledge. So if you read about the previous books, Poppy and her family, Poppy is the one in the Hathaway family. Poppy and her family, her their house gets burned down and they're trying to like remodel it. So while they remodel it, they're staying at this very fancy hotel. Harry Rutledge is the owner of said hotel. And he kind of like bumps into Poppy one day and starts to notice her and is like, this woman is everything. She is everything. I need her now. <laughs> and he will do anything to have her, including ruin her. I honestly loved Poppy in here. I love, I just love Lisa Klippas hair, Lisa Klippas's heroines, most of them anyway. And um, Poppy is amazing to me. Harry was the one that I was so-so on just because I'm not that big of a fan of a hero who lies and schemes to try to get the heroine. Like, I don't care for it. I'm, lying is a big no-no for me, so why would I like it in a hero? Um, so that kind of rubbed me the wrong way, so that's why this one isn't my favorite in the series. I just honestly loved Poppy. Poppy was the main saving grace of this book. I love how caring and attentive she was. Like, Harry couldn't give a rat's butt about, like, getting to know his staff at his hotel and Poppy just takes her time to like get to know them and talk to them every day and Harry cannot understand why and Poppy's just like they're people why wouldn't I want to talk to them <laughs> he's just baffled by how beautiful and caring she can be in a world that can be cruel sometimes I just prefer other heroes by, like, by Lisa Klippas to Harry like I don't enjoy Harry all that much but that's just me tropes in here there's a caretaking scene the heroine twists her ankle and the hero freaks out um, the hero falls first. There's the I don't believe in love trope too. Marriage of convenience, a married couple romance, a possessive hero, a quirky heroine, a ruined heroine. It's part of a sibling series and there's a wedding. I ended up giving this book a four out of five stars. Also, sorry for like the lighting if it's very weird. It is what it is. I have to work with what I have. <laughs> then I read, I don't know why I read this, but I was like not feeling well at all and when I don't feel well because of my chronic illness I very rarely read so it's a very big time jump from reading the book I just talked about previously one of the Hathaway's books to this one um I think I just wanted to read a very short quick romance um that I didn't have to think about all that much so I looked at the uh very short under 100 page novellas that I have on my kindle that I got for free because I have them categorized in page numbers and so I have a shelf for books under 100 pages and so I looked on there and this book popped up which is The Bride of Dr. Franklin Stein <laughs> um this is just really funny because this is about Franklin and um what's her name uh Becky Franklin and Becky. So Becky recently got her heart broken. Her uh, fiance cheated on her or left her at the altar. No, he left her at the altar. And she's like, kind of like a meme right now on the internet because like she's like running out of the church with like makeup smearing down her face and she's a meme online. And so she has not left her house in like weeks because she thinks the general public will like <laughs> attack meme her or something. And so the hero in here is named Franklin. And um, he's also staying in his house for many weeks because um, he works at this um, factory or something like that. And um, to save the owner's son, the owner's young son was about to fall into this vat of dye. And so he saves him, but then he falls into the vat of dye himself that's green. And so he's dyed green and he can't get the green out of his skin. Um, <laughs> And so this book takes place around Halloween. And I don't know why I picked this up because it's a Halloween book, but I did. Um, and the two of them are just like embracing their appearances um, <laughs> to go to a Halloween party. So I think he dresses up as like the um, friendly green giant because <laughs> he can like be green. And um, she dresses up as like a crying bride um they embrace who they are essentially and the two of them meet at the party and they fall in love this is a clean romance nothing happens in that department in this book i found it to be very hilarious honestly it was super sweet super cute if you don't like steam in your books maybe check this one out around halloween um i thought it was just fun there isn't much to this one i just gave it three stars because it was okay but i had fun 
reading it. Then I did another Ice Pen Barbarian reread for Helping Me Fall Asleep. We have Barbarian Mine, which is book four, which is about a Rook and Harlow. This is one of my favorites in the series. Die hard favorite. Freaking love this one because our hero kidnaps our heroine. There's a language barrier. And um, I like alien romances and fantasy romances where the hero is like the embodiment of the barbarian, but then he's totally soft for the heroine. Like, I love it. So that's what's in this book and that's why I love it. Of course, five stars on my reread. Then I read the fourth book in the Hathaway series, which is Married by Morning. I don't know why the covers change because there's not a heroine, like a, a woman on the cover of the rest of the books in the series. Um, but this one is about Leo and Catherine. Leo is the only brother in the Hathaway family and he is the oldest. So Catherine is the uh, governess slash etiquette tutor to the younger sisters in the Hathaway family. So Beatrix and Poppy. Catherine has been with their family for a couple years. At this point, you meet her in one of the other books. And so she's slowly been a part of the Hathaway family. And throughout the series, you can read about Leo and Catherine getting on each other's nerves. Like Leo loves to bicker and banter and peg on Catherine. And Catherine hates it. <laughs> hates it. Um, and so this is their romance. So this is an enemy to lovers for sure. But then this book starts and uh, Catherine has been a part of their lives for a while now and Leo starts to see Catherine in an entirely new way which is very interesting because you read about in the other books Leo has a very traumatic past with his love life the love of his life died from scarlet fever and he became an alcoholic from it and so he's slowly throughout the years because this book this series takes place for years um you get to read about him slowly becoming the like who he really is. At the beginning of this book, he's ditched the alcohol, doesn't really drink it anymore, and um, he's slowly starting to realize that Catherine may be really attractive and he may be very intrigued by her. <laughs> the banter in this one, loved it. I love bantering characters so much, especially when it's enemies to lovers and they bicker and banter. Oh, amazing. I love how you got to see on page them slowly start to grow to love one another because you don't really get to see that sometimes in romance books. Like a lot of times it's just like a flip a switch, then I love you now. Whereas like, I prefer where you get to slowly see the gradual change from getting to know one another and then loving you. I love that. So that's what's in here. Catherine also comes from a very traumatic past. And so I just loved her growth too. You get to read about her growth as a person as well as Leo. There's trigger right here for sexual assault. So please be aware. The tropes in here, there's a caretaking scene. The heroine takes care of the hero. Uh, character with glasses, Catherine has glasses and they become <laughs> kind of a running joke between Leo and Catherine. Um, <laughs> there is a damaged heroine. She's a governess. Uh, there's great banter, hate to love, hidden identity. The heroine has a hidden identity. It's a historical romance. I have a new trope called a nightmare savior. So when someone uh, saves someone from their nightmares, like their dreams like wakes them up. And so the hero saves the heroine from her nightmares. And it is a part of a sibling series. I ended up giving this book five out of five stars because I loved it. <laughs> then I read the last book in the series, which is Love in the Afternoon, which, oh my gosh, I loved this one. So this is the romance between the youngest Hathaway sibling, Beatrix and Christopher. Christopher is notoriously known for not liking Beatrix. He does not like how quirky and bizarre she is. She's the um, sibling in the series who's very quirky and collects uh, injured animals and adopts as many animals as she can. Um, she really, really reminds me of Penelope from um, The Wallflower Wager by Tessa Dare. So Christopher has gone off to war and he has started a correspondence and writing letters to Beatrix's friend Prudence. However, Prudence is very superficial and wants to find a rich man to marry and she doesn't think Christopher will be that man and so she never responds to Christopher's letters. However, Beatrix gets very invested in Christopher's letters to her friend and so Beatrix is like, I just want to write to him for fun. And so she does, but she doesn't say that it's her at the end of the letters. Like she just signs it as prudence because she doesn't want to complicate things or whatever. But then the two of them start to write back and forth to one another. Christopher does not know that this is actually Beatrix. He thinks he's talking to prudence. And the two of them start to fall in love with one another, another, <laughs> another through writing letters. And it's so beautiful. But then Beatrix is like, I can't trick him. Like I am tricking him. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. And so she ends up stopping all correspondence with him. And then once the war ends, Christopher makes it his life mission to marry the person he has been writing these letters to. However, when he sees Prudence again, after all these years, he's like, this is not the woman I've been writing letters to. What is going on? And so he tries to find the woman who's been writing those letters to him because he is in love with her. I loved this 
I love pen pal romances and I love honestly when characters fall in love with one another before they see each other. I love that. <laughs> I love that so much. I also love how we got to see a character change. Christopher at the beginning of this book is very judgmental, brash, hard, and then war kind of changes him as a person. He develops post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, from being in the war and he starts to become a better man than who he was before. He becomes more compassionate and understanding and unfortunately it's because of what he's gone through while he was at war. But I really love how you got to see him grow as a person. I also obviously loved Beatrix and all her many pets because that was very entertaining. <laughs> the trigger warning in here is war PTSD. Um, tropes in here, you have books with pets, damaged hero, hidden identity, historical romance, there's longing, um, there's pen pals, a quirky heroine, it's part of a sibling series, and there is a wedding. <laughs> then we're gonna have a visitor. Come here, buddy. He says hello. He was sunbathing in the window. Wow. You wanna say hi? They haven't seen you in a while, right? Right? Say hi, Oreo. <laughs> um, okay, you can go. Okay, you can go. Okay, uh, the next book that I read is another five star. <laughs> Um, we have A Touch of Stone and Snow by Mila Vane. This is the second book to A Heart of Blood and Ashes, which is one of my favorites of last year. This is a fantasy romance and I loved it. I didn't love it as much as book one because book one was just like perfection. I don't know why I just didn't love this one as much as book one, but this one still is five stars. <laughs> so this is a romance between Lizen and Arax. Lizen has been cast out of her village, her people, her tribe's people. Arax is her childhood best friend and Lizen was labeled a traitor by her people and she has been on her own for the past 10 years. Then Arax has been tasked on a mission to help his people um, and through his journey he ends up finding Lizen again after 10 years. And so the two of them have to confront their feelings for one another and what happened to them 10 years ago because you're trying to figure out what happened to them 10 years ago. There's way more to that book than what I just said, but I don't want to spoil anything because this book is just so good and I don't want to ruin your reading experience by spoiling something. I love fantasy romance books. I love them. This one was great. Amazing. This series is amazing. I can't wait to read book three when it comes out very soon. I have the prequel downloaded uh, and hopefully I'll read that one any day now. There's a bunch of magic dragons, weddings, there's demons and a ferocious and adorable snow cat in here. Um, the friends to lovers aspect in here was amazing. The two of them have just been waiting on each other, like waiting for years. It's been 10 years and neither of them have even thought about another person because they've waited for the other person, like their best friend. They've waited for that best friend because they know my best friend is my soulmate. And oh, I loved it. Um, Trigger warnings in here, this is a discussion of suicide um, tropes. Bucks with pets, there's a snow cat in here. I love him. Um, childhood crush, damaged heroine, a fantasy romance, friends to lovers, longing, another nightmare savior. Lizen has nightmares from the things she experienced 10 years ago. Um, there's a romance with magic in it, scar characters. Lizen has a, a very severe scar on her face because of what happened to her 10 years ago, which you read about. Um, I loved this. If you want to read a good fantasy romance series, pick these books up, please. Next, I read the uh, third book in the Brutal Birthright series by Sophie Lark. I love these audiobooks so much. And so I've been slowly reading them. I haven't been binging them just because I don't want to get characters confused because that's how I am with contemporary romance. Sometimes I don't like to read too many contemporary romance books in a row because things get jumbled in my brain, you know? And so I hadn't read a contemporary romance book in a bit. So I was like, let's pick up Savage Lover. Nero and his family are part of the Italian mafia. You've read about him in the previous books in this series and um Camille is trying to make ends meet at her father's auto shop. Nero and Camille ended up going to the same high school together. It's years later they're both in their 20s, early 20s. And then suddenly at the beginning of this book they start to run into each other. They slowly start to get to know each other and um they become kind of infatuated <laughs> and um they may or may not end up working on working together to do a specific heist. So that's really fun. Um, this was an enjoyable read, but it's not my favorite in the series. Honestly, it's probably my least favorite in the series so far. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get the oomph and the same feeling I felt with the first and second book, if that makes sense. I just felt like the romance in here isn't what I typically go for, or like I didn't see the slow progression between the two of them. Like I didn't, I didn't really see it. I didn't really see the chemistry, but that's just me. Okay, but I still gave this four stars because I thought this was so entertaining and I love this world that Sophie Lark has written and um, her writing is just amazing. Tropes in the air, there's a bad boy, a caretaking scene, Nero gets beat up and Camille 
takes care of him. Um, it's on Kindle Unlimited and it is a mafia romance. Like those aren't a lot of tropes in here. I think that was also my issue because there wasn't a lot of like tropes in here. <laughs> I'm a big trope girl. I love good tropes. And I couldn't really categorize this book into a lot of things. So anyway, um, but I did end up giving this book a four to five stars because I did thoroughly enjoy it. Next we have my big DNF for um, January. We have Silver Savage by I don't know, Strom. I've just been trying to pick up alien romance books that aren't by Ruby Dixon or Amanda Milo that I will like fall in love with. And it has been miss after miss after miss after miss for me. Like I pick one up, slowly start to get into it and then just hate it and get bo or get bored. Like, honestly, this is what the case was with this book. This is, I don't even remember what this is about. What is this about? Our heroine Lily ends up getting kidnapped by evil aliens and she gets put in this cage on the spaceship and there's a bunch of other cages in the room too. And um, I DNF'd it before the hero and the heroine even met because I was like, this is so boring. I'm at like 20% and these two haven't even met each other yet. And like Jake, Jakar is the alien hero because the spaceship she's been in has crash landed on his planet. I was just super bored. His chapters were so confusing, like full, full of alien jargon that I just did not understand at all and thought it was so confusing, very bored. DNF'd it at 31% and that's that. I don't know if I'll read this author honestly because just not, not it for me. Her writing was not it for me. And the last book that I read in January was a novella. I read Big Boss by Cassie Mint. This is her first book in like her collection of romances about bigger heroes, kind of like Jessica Kane wrote Hefty and Bulky and all those about bigger guy heroes. Cassie Mint has essentially done like kind of like the same thing where like their standalone novellas about bigger heroes. Um, so this one's Big Boss and oh my gosh, I love this one. So this is the romance between Daphne and her best friend's father, Jacob. So Daphne has been invited to stay with her friend over winter break. Her friend knows that she has a crush on her dad. And they like make jokes about it and everything, but um, she doesn't know how serious it is. Like Daphne is utterly infatuated <laughs> with her dad. She's very nervous for staying the next couple days in her house in the same house with him. So Daphne has had this huge crush on Jacob for years and she doesn't know that Jacob feels the exact same way. And the reason why he hasn't been very accommodating and welcoming to her is because he feels this attraction to her, but he feels like it's totally wrong. So he tries to keep a safe distance away. But since they're staying in the same house for a couple of days. Those things may be thrown out the window <laughs> they might reveal their feelings. I love Snow Bella. I immediately binged the rest of the books and I'll talk about those in February. Um, but this was just so stinking fun. So fun, entertaining, could not put this book down. And I loved all the forbiddenness and tension and angst between the two of them. Oh, so good. If you love Bulky specifically by Jessica Kane, this is very similar to that, but I love this one even more, honestly. <laughs> um, the tropes in here, there's an age gap. A best friend's parent, a bigger hero, it's forbidden. Forced proximity, there's a height difference. Um, there's a certain scene, it's like centered around Christmas time. They both can't fall asleep and they're standing under some mistletoe in the living room and they both look up and she goes to stand on the couch or a chair to like be at eye level with him so they could kiss and it was so cute. Um, this book is on Kindle Unlimited, it's a novella. Uh, there's single dad in here and it's a winter read. I love this one. And I thought it was a great book to close out January. So there you have it. Those are the many books that I ended up reading in January. Please let me know if you have read any of these books or if you plan to, I would love to know in the comments. And if you've made it this far into the video, leave me a, um, any kind of winter related emoji, a snowflake, snowman, because we just talked about Big Boss or what happens uh, during <laughs> Christmas time. Um, so yeah. Leave me any winter, winter related emoji. Also, it's cold as heck outside in Texas. So um, <laughs> it snowed yesterday, which is crazy. Um, but anyways, uh, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see you all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.